Barambong, the third largest city in Cambodia, is steadily becoming the country's business and industrial center. Despite the fast-paced growth and economic development here, many residents experience poverty, lack of access to health care, and social challenges. The Seventh-day Adventist Church in Badenbaum sees these challenges as opportunities to make people's lives better, and the 13th Sabbath offering helped make this possible. As Jesus taught us how to live a better life, we want to use this place to share people how to have a better life and encourage them to learn about Jesus Christ through the needs of people in this community. Pastor Shin and his wife Abigail are cross-cultural missionaries and they manage the Bottom Bong Essential Life Center. When they first arrived in Cambodia, they discovered that their greatest challenge in operating the center was that they couldn't speak the local language. Not intimidated, they met the challenge head on and started to learn it. Meanwhile, local missionaries and pastors stepped in and willingly gave their time to start offering services of the Bottom Bong Essential Life Center. We opened this center for to serve this community of Matambong through restaurant, through clinic, through dental clinic, there's a gym, there's a language program, with, and also a music classes. And until Jesus comes, we will fulfill His great commission to spread and share the gospel throughout this city and throughout the country. In 2018, the 13th Sabbath offering was collected to help construct this center. Thanks to your contribution to the offering, these programs were made possible. Since it opened to the public, it has become a community center in every sense of the word. Here, people come to learn, play, and make friends. The, the parents of the music school, they are absolutely excited about um, um, the center. Um, they love the facility. They, they like the, I think they like me as a teacher. <laughs> and um, they see their children partaking in this cultural education um, that's not offered anywhere in Cambodia. As far as I know, um, this is the only music school in town. The center is also a place where people can see glimpses of Jesus' love. During the construction of the building, missionaries began mingling with the local people, making friends and introducing them to Jesus. When the center opened, several people from Badambang accepted Christ and were baptized. Now they're all part of the team that's reaching out to more people in this growing city. This place really gives me a chance to know Jesus. I learn about Jesus through the love and care of the people at this center. The Bottom Bong Essential Life Center has just started to reach out to the community and doors are already opening. Let's pray for Pastor Shin and his family and for all the missionaries in Barambang who are making an impact in this city. Thank you for making projects like this possible by giving to the 13th Sabbath offering each quarter. We thank you so much for your support. May God bless you. song service. Um, I'm going to pray now. So Heavenly Father, um, may the meditation of our hearts and the praise from our lips be acceptable and heartwarming to you. We pray that you feel all the love that we have for you and that you fill us with all the love you have for us as we sing to you and praise you. And we look forward to eternity where we will sing the song of the redeemed and you are our God, and we are waiting for you. In Jesus' name, amen. This is just God making me less awkward, apparently, or maybe more awkward, or getting used to the awkward. I'm not sure. 
Let's just, we'll just enjoy this moment. <laughs> move to the next one <laughs> it's okay I mean, if you want to put the things up, we'll go for it. And if you guys remember it, great. If not, I'll just be singing. It's okay. <laughs> I tell people all the time, I do awkward really well. Can you tell? <sighs> Super fun. <sighs> it's okay. This is just desensitizing me to being in front of people. I know this is what this is. Surely. Okay. Um, we're going to try We Have This Hope. Yay! Thank you. Oh, by the way, if you are good at playing the piano we need piano players that would be awesome and also if you want to help sing or do this part because obviously mm, it's not my thing <laughs> i'm one of those back of the room kind of know the words sing person it's a, it's a thing. yes sir thank you what is your name scott this is scott everyone please give him a hand
God just comes through, doesn't he? (laughs) Thanks, Scott. I'm going to pray a lot that God blesses you for this. (laughs) Ah, Good times, good times. All right, so the next one is 530. This one we should all kind of know, right? I hope so. And this is just further proof that sometimes when things are rough, it can still be well with our soul. ask you to stand on that one, but we got it done. Thank you, guys. What a pleasure it is to be back here worshiping with you. You know, Lurie asked me to do a children's story, and my sister called me up and said, I'll take care of it, and where's she at? Oh, she's here. She just got here. That's great. (laughs) Anyway, you know when you go to a wedding, you meet cousins that you meet for the first time. And so I have a cousin who's going to come up and tell the story. Her name is Ellen, and she is a palliative care hospice uh, chaplain. She helps out. She lives at Berrien Springs. She uh, helps out with the chaplaincy department at Berrien Springs, and we're excited to have her. So the children, please collect the lamb's offering and come up over here to for a great, great children's story. Oh, here we go. 
you have a seat or sit with mommy, whatever you're coming. All right, all right. Let's go collect, guys. Let's collect the money. so much for playing. It's so nice to have the music. I think it gives the kids a little energy. Come on, guys. Let's uh, just put them there. That'll be fine. Let's all sit here, guys. And we got a young lady, too. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Just put the money in there. Let's go. Oh, you guys have a wonderful sanctuary. This is beautiful. You know, I'm blessed. I live uh, over in Bering Springs. Uh, you going to collect those guys? Oh, there's a box in there. Let's have a seat, guys. Let's go, 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 go. And uh, the story I'm going to share with you, I think you, thanks, bro. I'm just going to put it here. The story I want to share with you guys, I think you're all going to really enjoy. As I was sharing with you, thank you for giving me the opportunity. You have a beautiful sanctuary. God has blessed you and smiled upon you. It's such a blessing when you, uh, I mean, travel that far. <laughs> And you come to a beautiful church, and you feel at home. God bless you all. And uh, I guess I'd be a cousin now. I was, uh, my brother-in-law is a pastor, and we were doing genetic stuff, and I did the hereditary one. And those of us who have Irish roots, we know we're gifted in areas. And I don't know how many generations back, uh, Rebecca and I, the counts, the uncles, there's a, there's a click there. And so they say that we're all related to the queen somehow. We haven't found that one yet, but... Uh, God has a wonderful way. But I think the beautiful part, as God's family, we all are related. Praise his name. Boys and girls, I got an awesome story for you. But before I give the story, I want to ask you something. When you grow up, what do you want to be? All right. I want to be a dentist like my dad. Like your pop. I want to be a judge. What you want? How about you? Hmm. You gotta think on that? A fireman. Fireman. Oh. How about you, sweetheart? What do you want to be when you grow up? A doctor. Oh, a doctor. Oh, that's a good one. How about you, honey? Oh, you gotta think about it. We'll let him think. The story I'm gonna share with you happened actually a hundred years ago. That's a long, long time. That's older than grandma and grandpa or nanny or whatever. Oh, this happened so long ago. It's a true story. When I went to college, or Andrews University, we were asked, what do you want to be? Many of us went to the mission field. We don't do as much now. 
But this story happened 100 years ago, and there was a mommy and a daddy, and they weren't, they were from another denomination. They're, they're from Sweden, and they decided with the Ericsons to go to Africa. It was called the Congo then. You know what the, where the Congo's changed now name is? Zaire. Yeah. So they went, and back in those days, man, guys, if you're gone camping where there's no running water, no, I mean, we're talking not even those nice little toilets where you can at least go in and shut the door. You had to find trees and stuff. It was really, and then you were scared what was in the trees or on the ground. So they head off as missionaries, and David Flood was his name, and his wife was Savannah, and they went to Africa, and the Arakans joined them, and they were at the mission station, and they thought, we really want to go deeper in to start new for God. A lot of missionaries did that. They would say, okay, let's go 50 miles in or 25. So they went 50 miles in, and they found a, a village, and they went to the tree, the chief, and they said, chief, can, can we put a school here and, and, and help you? And the chief said, no. Hmm. So David said, well, can we build? He said, Half a mile down the road. So they built half a mile down the road. They built a little hut, mud hut. Yes, mommy would like that. Mow hut. And they took cow dung for the floor and then waxed it. I know, I know. And so they lived like that, primitive guys. But you know what? They thought it was all worth it for Jesus. They thought if we can bring Jesus to these people, because the chief said, we don't want your one God. We got many gods, and we don't want your ways. But I have one boy in the village who'll come twice a week. He'll sell you chickens and eggs and take care of things for you. And so twice a week, hello, sweetheart, twice a week, a young little boy would come. And I think he was about Cooper's age. He would come, and he'd sell eggs. And Savannah would talk to him. She would show him pictures of Jesus. But during this time, the Erican said, we can't stay here anymore. We've lost our first baby. We're going back to the mission depot. So David and his wife stayed alone. And guess what happened? Savannah got pregnant. <gasps> they were all excited. But guess what? There were no doctors. And so the little boy said, let me ask the chief. The chief's heart softened. He's okay, send the midwife. So the midwife came when she had her little girl, and they called her Aino, which is a Scandinavian name. But Savannah had been fighting malaria really bad, really bad. And 20 days after having her little girl, she died. She died. You know, sometimes people can only take so much. David lost it, packed up, went down the mountain, and he said to the Erickson at the mission, you take care of little, I know, I'm fed up with God, I want nothing to do with him, he took my wife, it's just, I've had enough, that's it, I'm out of here. And so the Erickson's had her for about six months, and then the Erickson's got sick, and they died. So many people died serving God. And they gave it to an American couple from North Dakota, here at home. And they changed her name to Aggie. They said, let's make her American, this I know stuff. So Aggie. So Aggie went back to the States with them, because war was coming. And they went back to the States. She went to Minnesota to a Bible college. She fell in love with a pastor who became a president of a Christian Bible college out in Seattle, Washington. But she always wondered about her heritage, her Scandinavian heritage. And one day in the mail, she got a, uh, a magazine, guys. But it was, in Scan it was in Scandinavian. It was in Swedish. She, I, I don't know this language. So she went to the school, and there she saw the name of her mother with a cross. <gasps> and the man read it to her, the professor read it to her. He said, hmm, well, you might want to know this. Your mama who died, that's her cross. They made a cross there. She's very special over there. And she said, why? M Mom and dad left. He said, oh, no. Do you know that little boy that she won to Jesus? He built a school 
and brought the whole village to Jesus and even the chief. 620 people. 620 people. Then she said, oh my. And the church, it was their 25th anniversary. The church and the college put money together so she'd go to Sweden. She found her daddy. He was 78 years old. And she had half brothers and half sisters. And they said, don't talk God. Don't mention God. Don't say nothing about God's name because he's bitter. So she went in and she said, Papa, he was so excited to see her. And then she said, God took care of He got stiff. He didn't mention God. You don't mention that name. He said, don't talk God to me. I lost your mother. And when I even lost your brother, she didn't know she had a brother she lost. And he said, she said, oh, Papa, don't you know that when Mama died, that little boy brought 620 people to Jesus? And he wept. And he wept. They had two wonderful weeks together. She came back to the States, went home, and her papa died. She was invited to a conference, you guys, in London, England. And a man who spoke only French and had a doctorate and talked all about Zaire and the mission field there. And he put up a picture on the screen of a cross. (gasps) It was her mother's name, Savannah Flood. And he said because of her, 110,000 people were brought to Jesus. Brothers and sisters and children, we don't realize the influence we have. Our kindness, our words, and even death. We're told that the seed dies and then it bears fruit. So let's bow our heads and ask that we'll be an example for Jesus. Whatever he calls you to do when you grow up. Let's bow our heads, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you that you have a calling on each one of these young souls' lives all our lives, you are told us through the pen of inspiration, as surely as we have a mansion in heaven, you have work for us on earth with our name on it. Bless these young people. Bless the speaker. Thank you, Father, that our works are never in vain because you are the one that leads us. In your precious name, amen. Go back to your seats, guys. Thank you, everyone. Well, good morning, church. Glad that you all are awake this morning. (laughs) Sometimes it's an ongoing joke. Sometimes I say good morning and it's not good morning. But you guys are are awake and and lively this morning. I'm glad to see it. And before we get into some of the announcements, I do want to um, acknowledge a a couple folks. Um, We do have um, another conference official here in the house, not from the Oklahoma conference, but from the Washington conference, Craig Carr. Nice to have you here worshiping with us this morning. And... Um, I, I did a little digging and I, I got on the conference website and I saw that your title is the VP of administration. Is that the equivalent to executive secretary that we have in the Oklahoma conference? All right. All right. I thought so. Um, nice to have you here. And it's, it's a bit of a homecoming this weekend because we also have two of our past serving elders here. Uh, Don Adams is, is here and, and Jasmine is here and, and also our past treasurer, Teresa, is here. And the reason why it's a bit of a homecoming and, and some of these individuals are here is because yesterday we had a one Blake Unsel walk into this room, this sanctuary, with a lovely young lady named Cassie Carr. But then when they left here, after uh, a, a few minutes, they left as Blake and Cassie Unsel with the same last name. And it was a, it was a beautiful wedding. And um, we, I actually, I did a wedding the week before as well. I know Jasmine is in town for a wedding, so those, those wedding bells are sounding. It is summertime. And if you have a bulletin, I want to call your attention to the inside middle flap 
under church happenings, and if you look down a little further near the middle of that page, coming church events. Now, we've been talking about the tractor day (laughs) for a number of weeks now, but I talked to Calvin this morning, and because of the weather, it's supposed to start raining there in Cashin tonight and rain all through the night and into next week. Uh, the tractor day is being postponed. So it's not. <laughs> Well, and I'm glad that you were really looking forward to it. Um, the good news is, as I talked to Calvin, it's not being canceled. It's being postponed. And so maybe later in the summer or maybe even in the fall, we can try to get something together. Um, but what is not being canceled or postponed is the Tzitzki's 25th anniversary that will be taking place here tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. p.m. in the Fellowship Hall, and so please, please mark your calendars, plan to attend. You are all invited as we come together and, and celebrate 25 years of marriage. Wow. 25 years of marriage. I'm, I'm really excited. There is going to be food, so please come and, and celebrate with Brandon and Amy Lou and their family. The next thing that I want to remind you of is VBS. That will be starting June 7th, and it will that's a Monday, and it's going to run through the 11th. It'll be from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. here at the Edmond Church, and this is not just for Edmund, uh, local Edmond members. This is for anybody that would like to attend. So if you have friends that maybe don't have a church home or maybe they uh, attend a church that isn't having VBS, please, please invite them to come out. I'm really excited. Things are starting to, to come together. I'm looking for, for, oh, there you are, Renee. Thank you so much for all the work that you've put in and for all of you that have stepped up and are, are getting involved. I know that this is going to be a blessing for those kids, but most importantly, or more importantly, I, I think that us adults, we, we get into the idea of just working, working, but I think that when we work with these kids and share with them, we are going to ultimately be blessed even more. And then also the 13th Sabbath, just uh, be mindful of that. You'll want to be here in the sanctuary early at the start of the service. Um, Get in here at 11 a.m. because some of our children's Sabbath school programs are going to have a few musical numbers to share with us as a church. And also, you see that date, July 24th, it's getting closer, the Fill the Baptistry Sabbath. This baptistry is going to be filled with water. And once again, I am asking for your help, your assistance as disciples of Christ to help me out a little bit. You all know people that are searching. You all know people that are seeking for for truth, for love, for acceptance, for joy that we know can only be found in Christ. If you know individuals like that, let them know that there is an invitation. Let, let, Let them get into contact with myself or one of the elders so that we can make sure that we are not filling that water for no reason. Now, if we don't have anybody ready for baptism on that day, that's okay. The water will still be in there, and I think it will be a tremendous reminder of what we've been called to do, what the Great Commission is. If we're not leading people to Christ and baptizing people, what what are we doing? What are we doing? So that date is coming up July 24th. And also, we're trying something new out today. Chris put this together. Um, It's a digital communication card. I believe we have a slide for it, and if you want to pull out your phones... And switch over to your camera. You should be able to just zoom in on that barcode with your camera. And you'll get a little pop-up. You click on that pop-up. It will take you to your internet browser. And then from there, you should see this digital communication card. You can put your email, your name, phone number, best way to contact you, how we can pray for you. Teresa, I heard your phone. (laughs) No, we were joking about that earlier. And when it vibrates, we hear it, right? 
And then a, a few other things that you can mark if there are some other next steps that you would like to, to take. So if, if you are a member here, this is just another opportunity for you to stay in touch with your church leadership. But if you are a guest here today and you would like to get in touch with us, please fill this out and send it in and you will hear from one of our church leaders this week. Thank you, Chris, for putting that together for us. And then also, Matthew Hansen is planning an Ambassadors Summer Kickoff. As most of you know, Matthew Hansen has really taken on the Ambassadors program here at the Edmund Church, and he's doing a fantastic job. And, and our young people are getting involved and getting engaged, and, and he wants to make sure that we are having these fun social events um, more often than not. So May 29th on the church lawn is the aim for that starting at 6.30. So all, all of you young folks, uh, take a picture of that, be mindful of that, and um, if you're not in the group chat with Matthew, let him know that you would like to be added so that you can stay up to date with some of the events and some of the meetings that are going on there. And then finally, I do just want to let you all know, just so that you're aware after the church service, you will see um, a number of your, your church leaders and elders, board members, going off into a side room there in the fellowship hall. Um, we're actually having a, a ministry-focused board meeting today. We've been having those for a few months now, and we're going through a book on discipleship together. And so we're getting together to discuss that. And the plan is that in the future, we want to bring you all along on the journey with us. So if, if you see us sneaking away and going off into that side room, that's the reason for it. Be assured, we still love you, and that's one of the big reasons why we're getting together and making a point to start this discipleship journey. And so that is all I have to share with you concerning the church life here at the Edmund Seventh-day Adventist Church, and I'm going to pass the time over to Gary for our tithes and offerings. So our offering today is for our church budget, a combined church budget, if you would, which is part of nature, or part of uh, worship, excuse me, giving back to uh, the Lord in our offerings. And worship is, by nature, participatory. It has an active rather than a passive theme. If we come to church with our hearts tuned to hear God's voice, then we should be able to perceive him, wouldn't we think so? In every aspect of our worship service. That includes the hymns, the songs, uh, preaching, our prayers, and yes, even our offerings. Worship, you may or may not know, is related to the word worth. True worship occurs when we come to church and praise God and lift up the Lord and offering ourselves to him in total devotion and in our service. So, if you would remember that giving offerings, returning it actually, is an act of worship. Those that are taking up the offering, if you want to rise, please, and we'll bow our heads and have our prayer for the offering. Loving and kind, merciful Father in heaven, we give ourselves to you. We offer ourselves to you as you have done for us in the past. We ask your blessing on these funds. May they strengthen, nourish, and grow your kingdom for Christ's sake. Amen.
Today's scripture reading is from John 12, 24. I'll be reading from the King James Version. John 12, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit.
It's time now for our congregational prayer, our pastoral prayer. Um, this one comes with a homework assignment. I'll explain that in just a minute. But first, let me invite uh, two people to come up here, Pastor TJ and Chris Bryant, our first elder. If you would come up and join me on the platform. Of course, you know, TJ Sands, our pastor, and Chris Bryant, our first elder. And now for the homework assignment. It's a simple one. Just pray for these people. Uh, like I say, homework means at home. So at home, if you would, on a regular basis, if you don't already, start praying for these people in their positions. Um, after your family prayer, those that you lift up uh, or with special uh, people, also include these two, their positions especially, uh, because many things come across their desks from time to time, and other leaders too, that are of a sensitive nature or... Uh, they require special uh, godly intervention. And just pray that uh, the Lord would uh, give them the wisdom and strength uh, and the courage to handle the various situations that we have. Now, before we kneel, those that want to, are there any silent requests? Requests that you would like to be known only between you and the Lord? Yeah, raise your hands. I invite you, if you would like to join us, you can kneel or sit where you're at for our prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, we praise you this morning through Jesus. We recognize him as our creator, redeemer, life sustainer, healer, mender of broken people. Father, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, we praise you in all things. This morning I lift up our first elder and our pastor and other team leaders here at Edmond as they shepherd your church. Father, give them special guidance, assistance, understanding, knowledge and wisdom, discernment. May they have vision, Lord, that's divinely enlightened to deal with your church. We ask also, Lord, for those that have raised hands that want silent request, you see them, you know every issue everything that's going on in our lives, and we submit ourselves to you. Father, we know that you love us, we love you, and we thank you for your presence in our lives, and we surrender to you. We ask this and your blessing, along with the forgiveness of our sins, through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. I believe you you all will be tracking with me momentarily. I do see it back there. If you notice in your bulletin, I made an error. Yes, pastors make mistakes. When I emailed the title in, I, I emailed it wrong. If you look in the bulletin, I believe it says planted, pressured, and dead. Uh, but the sermon is actually entitled buried, pressured, and dead. Is there something I need to do? Oh, yeah. It's only showing, there we go. I was connected to the young adult one. My mistake again. <laughs> All right, so buried, pressured, and dead. The, the subtext is roots, diamonds, and new life. And I promise you this will make sense as we move forward. Today, I want to talk to you about the Christian walk. The Christian walk. It's not always easy. It's not always fun. Sometimes it's scary, hard, difficult, painful, frustrating. You can put in your 
your own words there. So what do we do about it? What do we do about it, right? I, I mean, a, a Christian walk is something we are seeking after. We're calling other people to want to be a part of it. But when we're honest, it's not always easy. And we as humans, sometimes um, the desire is to move away from things that are difficult, frustrating, hard. You know, sometimes the greatest change we can make in our lives is learning to change the way we view things. Learning to change the way we view things. Think about this concept of buried, buried. Is being planted or buried good or bad? Good or bad? What are some bad things that people can bury? Trash, right? I mean, for, for, for centuries, people have been burying trash, Another thing, there, there's some, some sad emotions attached when, when somebody dies, when somebody passes away, right? And we bury their body in the ground. But then there are also some good things in connection with being planted or buried. Think about seeds, right? In order to grow plants and trees and fruits and vegetables, you've got to take a seed and plant it, bury it in the soil, and another thing, once again, something that has been going on for centuries is taking treasure, something beautiful, something expensive, something meaningful, and burying it so it's safe for a later time. And we know this has been going on for hundreds, yea, thousands of years because we find buried treasure to this day, and we even see Jesus talking about buried treasure, right, in one of his parables. What about pressure? What are ways in which pressure is bad? You know, those of you with, with allergies, sinus pressure, right? Some of, some of us that maybe struggle with anxiety from time to time, chest pressure, not fun. What about being pressured to do something you don't want to do? something we call peer pressure, right? That's not, that's not good. That, that's the bad type of pressure. But in what ways is pressure a good thing? Good thing. Those of you doctors and nurses in the room, when somebody has an open wound, before it can get stitched up, it's good to put pressure on it, right? To keep it from bleeding, or what about, we talked about being pressured by other people, what about being pressured by someone to do something that maybe you don't want to do, but you know that you should? You know it's good for you to do it. That's a, a, a good form of peer pressure. And then what about death? Ways in which death is bad, right? I mean, I, I think that we all know the sadness that comes when a human life has ended, the, the death of our, our mortal bodies. But even on a, on a smaller level, when our, our phone batteries die or our car batteries die, it's not, it's not good, not, not fun. But when is death a good thing? When is death a good thing? Now, I know not everybody in here um, can relate to this, but for those of you that do eat meat, um, when you eat that meat, it's good that it's dead beforehand, right? That meat or that fish, but what about on a more spiritual level? When is death a good thing? When a resurrection is needed. When a resurrection is needed. When a seed is planted, it leads to root growth. When carbon is put under pressure, it leads to a diamond. And we'll talk about the science about that for those of you science-minded folks that are saying, uh-uh, wait, wait, pastor. And then when something dies, it can lead to a new life, a new life. So let's take some time this morning and contemplate roots diamonds, and a new life. I'd like 
to say a few words about Chinese bamboo. Chinese bamboo. Once you plant it, you need to water it and nurture it and fertilize it. That's not much different from any plant, any seed that you put into the ground. But with Chinese bamboo, nothing happens in that first year. You do the same thing the next year, and still, you don't see anything happening. You will see no results for one, two, three, four years. Four years, you don't see any results. You're waiting for those results, and you're not seeing any evidence of progress, any evidence of the work that you are putting in. Can you imagine yourself doing the same thing every day, not having any evidence that your efforts are paying off? Maybe you know about some of those things. The only thing you know is that the results are sure to come. That's what you've heard. They're supposed to come in four years. When you're planting Chinese bamboo, it takes some faith. But what happens on the fifth year is simply amazing. One morning you wake up and you see a a small bamboo sprig. Then the next day, an even bigger one. And within five weeks, that sprig has grown to 90 feet. 90 feet in five weeks. What do you think? Did it do all of that growing in just five weeks? weeks, or had it been actually growing for the past four years, you just didn't see it. You just didn't see it with your own eyes. The bamboo, it was growing underground the entire time, the entire time, without visible evidence, but it was growing. It was developing the solid root system necessary to support the height and weight of that bamboo stalk for a lifetime, for a lifetime. It's sort of this concept we talk about in our lives of laying a firm foundation for the future. Is there anything that you think we could learn from Chinese bamboo? I think there are a few things. One, it all starts with a solid root system. It all starts with a solid root system. Are you, dear friends, grounded and rooted in Christ? Simple question, not always a simple answer. Are you grounded and rooted in Christ? As a Christian, you have taken his name as your own. You realize that, right? And there is... There's a commandment. I think it's often taken out of context about taking the Lord's name in vain. I think that has less to do with cursing and more to do with representing that name that you've taken as yours. Do you daily allow his spirit to influence your thoughts and actions? Do you do the right thing when nobody is watching? Are you trustworthy? Do you keep your commitments? Do you encourage others or do you spend time putting them down? Do your words line up with your actions or do you contradict them? Do you strive to always do the most loving thing? Maybe I'm stepping on your toes. That's okay. I'm stepping on my own too. This is why we need to daily commit our lives to Christ. Recommitment. More on that later. But another thing that we can uh, learn from Chinese bamboo is that it takes small actions every day. Small actions every day. In the early days, the bamboo does not just grow huge overnight. It just doesn't happen. And in life, real success takes time, diligent effort. Sometimes we're not seeing the fruits of our labor right away. The same goes with becoming more like Jesus, becoming more like Jesus. 
I meet a lot of people that think that when they get into the waters of baptism, they will come out and all their problems will be gone and they will be a perfect saint acting like Jesus in character, in word, in action every single day, no mistakes. Now that's a great goal to have. But the reality often doesn't play out that way. And if we go into it with that mindset, it's easy to get discouraged. But if we realize that we have a root system growing every single day connected to Christ, we can keep going even when we mess up, even when we make mistakes, even when we don't see the fruits of our labor. You become more like him by seeking him every day. And I'm not just talking about Bible study. Bible study is great, but it's gotta be more than that. How often do you serve others? How often do you pray? How often do you pray for others? How often do you put others' needs before your own? Mercy, that's, that's the hard one, right? How often do you seek Christ's guidance in your life? The third thing we can learn from Chinese bamboo is that the Christian journey takes persistence, patience, and faith. Persistence, patience, and faith. Does the Bible confuse you sometimes? Do the people in your church frustrate and anger you at times? Do you ever feel like maybe God isn't hearing your prayers? Do you feel like maybe church leaders aren't listening, they don't hear your concerns, your worries, your fears, that they fall on deaf ears? Do you ever feel like some people maybe just have it easier than you? Be persistent. Keep pushing forward wherever you feel God is calling you. Be patient. Things may not always go your way. We live in a sinful world. We're in a battle with an enemy. Sometimes that enemy is looking at us in the mirror each morning. Bad things happen to all of us, but they do not need to define who we are in Christ. Amen. Circumstances, they're not the issue. A lot of the times, it's how we deal with them. Be faithful. God has called you and me to follow him, to follow him. Don't allow your anger or frustrations or fear or concerns get in the way of that. Those things will pop up, yes, but don't allow them to paralyze you from moving forward in your walk with Christ. What about diamonds? Diamonds. They're formed from carbon. Diamonds are beautiful. I don't think anyone's going to debate that. Diamonds are also the hardest naturally occurring material known to mankind. I know that when I was growing up, I always wondered why my mother and my grandmother removed their wedding rings whenever they would play dominoes in the kitchen on the glass table. Later, I learned it was because the diamonds on their wedding rings could literally scratch into the glass of that table. Now, to be clear, not all diamonds come from coal. That's a scientific fact. Most diamonds are not formed from coal. The only diamonds that can be made from coal are artificially made. But for the sake of this illustration, (laughs) I do want to talk about the fact that carbon, which makes up about 50 to 90% of coal, under pressure can create a beautiful diamond. Something that isn't so pretty under pressure can become beautiful. Is it possible, dear friends, that God can use those difficult situations and challenges in our lives 
to change us into something beautiful. And I believe that if we are being changed and formed and molded into the image of Christ, we are becoming more beautiful. I haven't found anything more beautiful than Jesus. I have found a very close second, and I put a ring on it. (laughs) (laughs) The Bible talks multiple times about us being like gold refined in a fire. (laughs) I don't know about you, but I, I don't want to be inside of a fire. It's not fun. But in these illustrations, the gold does represent us and the fire represents those hard times, those difficult circumstances that we all face in our lives. If we're following after God and allowing his spirit to work in our lives, he can use our difficult situations to change our character. Changing character doesn't happen overnight. But with God's help, it can happen over time. If we allow him, he will make us more like Jesus. He will make us more like Jesus. Something that has been helpful to me to stop looking at the challenges and pressures in life as bad things is to instead learn to look at them as opportunities. Bad things, difficult circumstances, hard times, look at them as opportunities. Opportunities to grow, opportunities to learn, opportunities to listen, opportunities to trust more in God. If we're honest, we trust way too much in ourselves. I know that that is something that I have made a point to work on this year. When a problem arises, instead of trying to instantly think of how TJ can solve it, take it to the Lord. Maybe there are things I can do, but I need to take it to God first. Because I... I've I've lost count of how many times I've worried and stressed and tried to solve a problem and I've just wasted time and effort. And then God shows up and is like, I got you. (laughs) I had you all along. My door was open. Where were (laughs) you? Give it to God. I'd like to share two texts from Scripture that I've also found helpful in my life. The first is from James chapter one, verses two through four. It says, count it all joy, all joy, when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking, say it with me, nothing. Lacking nothing. Wow. The pressures and difficult times we go through in this life can lead to a completely changed character and outlook on life. We have to ask ourselves, though, am I willing to allow God to work in my life through the hard times? And will I choose to react positively in negative situations? Am I willing to allow God to work in my life through hard times, and will I choose to react positively in negative situations? Easier said than done, but nothing is impossible with God. The next verse takes us to the Gospel of John, and this is Jesus speaking here. Red letters. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. Just let that breath out. Let those words from Jesus sink in. In me, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. That's the reality. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. 
Jesus lets us know that while we are living in this sinful world, not everything is gonna be perfect. We will face tribulations, yet he calls us to be positive in the face of tribulations. And let me tell you, dear friends, when you live and act that way, the people in your life that maybe don't know Jesus, they're gonna notice that. And they're gonna start asking questions. How do you have such a calm, peaceful demeanor while we're all running around like chickens with our heads cut off? When we're worrying and stressing and, and, and falling apart, how can you hold it all together? And it's a beautiful opportunity to not take the credit, but to give the credit to God. An extended invitation, letting them know that they can have the same experience. Jesus overcame the world and he will give us the power needed to do the same. So the title of today's sermon is Buried, Pressured, and Dead. We've talked about being planted or, or rooted or buried. We've talked about being pressured or challenged, but now we need to talk about dying. It's easy to get uncomfortable when we start talking about death was our death, and that is true. He died in our place so that we do not have to experience the second death. But we rarely talk about the fact that Christ's life was also our life. All we have to do is accept it and believe it in faith. That's what baptism represents. It's a symbol of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. And when we go into that water, dying to self, we come out of that water, resurrected as new creatures in Christ, in the same way that Christ rose from the grave on that Easter Sunday. 1 Corinthians 15, 31, I affirm by boasting in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. 1 Corinthians 15, 31. So Paul here, he's saying he dies daily. Daily. It's not an experience that you just had one time when you got baptized. It's a daily experience. Now, obviously, he's not speaking about physically dying, right? We're not talking about zombie Paul here. He's talking spiritual terms. Spiritual terms. What does it mean to die spiritually? He dies to his own desires. He dies to his selfishness. He dies to his selfish attitudes. He dies to his angry words, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, this next verse that I'm going to share to you, it's going to bring us to the crux of the matter. Powerful verse. Jesus is going to tie this whole sermon together for us. Buried, pressured, and dead. John 12, 24, most assuredly, I say to you, he's speaking to you, dear friends, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. A seed is not alive in and of itself. It's what's inside of that seed that has the potential for life. If a seed is not willing to die, break apart, fall away, then the embryo of a plant inside of it will never grow and thrive. That's just the truth. And the other truth is that we are the same way. We are born into this world like a dried up seed. This sinful world has taken our life away from us. But when we accept Jesus into our hearts, all of that changes. All of that changes. When we accept his death on the cross as our own death, it allows the beautiful life that is inside of us through his spirit to grow and to thrive. And what's cool is that that life can give new life to others as well. 
Are we willing to share it? This is how Paul can say in 1 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new in the context of Christ. Beautiful. Christ has offered to make you new. Will you accept it? Will you accept it? Will you let him do the work in your life? When you feel that you've been buried, buried by doubt, buried by stress, buried by fear, buried by negative emotions, buried by this life, remember the Chinese bamboo. Know that God is working in your life. He's working even when you might not see it, even when you might not feel it. You might not always see the progress. You might not always feel that he is near, but in those moments, dear friends, remember the Chinese bamboo. Where's your foundation? Where are your roots? Are you rooted in Christ? When you feel that you are being pressured, pressured by other people to step off the path that God has laid for your life, pressured by the challenges in your life to become bitter, pressured by your own negative emotions to give up, remember the diamond formed under pressure into a beautiful, strong thing. Are you allowing God to speak to you through tough situations? Are you allowing God to lead you through difficult times? Are you willing to look at life's challenges as opportunities to grow, to change, and to learn? Rejoice in the knowledge that Christ's death was your death. When you accepted Jesus' death on your behalf, you became a new creation, a new person, different from the person that you were, the person the enemy wanted you to be. But when you die to self, you receive a new life in Christ. His life is your life. So yes, we've been buried, pressured, and dead to our old selves. This should not be seen as a bad thing, but instead a good thing. This is Christianity. This is the new life that Christ has laid out for you. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Maybe there is someone here who has never accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And after hearing this message, you are now saying, I want to be planted, I want to be challenged. I want to die to my old self and become that new creation in Christ. Have that new life in Jesus. And maybe there is someone here who has already accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And after hearing this message, you've decided, I want to recommit my life to Christ. I want to be planted. I want to be challenged. I want to die to my old self and accept that new life as it can only be found in Christ. If that is you, I want to give you the opportunity to pray about it. We've been talking for a couple months now that that we here at the Edmund Church, we want to be more focused on prayer. We want to be more intentional about listening to God, but also listening to you. And so I want to invite Gary up as our elder in charge today, and we're going to start doing this week after week. And I know that Pastor Walter has done similar things at the Central Church, and I think it's powerful. So if you've been stirred by this message today, or maybe there is a specific need you have, a specific prayer request that you have, I want to invite you forward. I'm going to have the closing prayer. 
and then I'm going to step down. Gary is over here. After the closing prayer, you are all free to leave. But if you want some special prayer, if you want to talk to myself or to Gary, please stick around. Please come forward. Let's talk. Let's pray. Would you bow your heads with me at this time? Our loving, gracious, heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for Jesus. We thank you for his love. We thank you for his sacrifice. We thank you for his example. Lord, through faith, we accept his death as our death. We accept his resurrected life as our new life. Lord, convict us. Speak to our hearts that we may daily be rooted in Christ. Lord, we give ourselves to you now. We want that firm foundation built upon you so that we can go forth and share your good news message with a world that is dying to hear it. Lord, may we leave here changed because we spent time with you and with each other. And we ask it all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. ...to reflect his character and share his message. Now, while the church building is open once again, we realize that many of you, for varying circumstances, whether it's the pandemic, whether it's distance, you can't be here in person, but we still want to connect with you. So please, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out our website, edmundadventist.org. We look forward to connecting with you and walking alongside you as you come to know Jesus better. Thank you.